few years ago, as you well know, our world has changed dramatically. We had to witness so many breaking news, so much pain, so much suffering. We had to wear masks. We had to keep social distance, distancing in the last two years. There has been so many things that have changed. And now when we thought that maybe things are improving a little bit, at least here in Eastern Europe, things are changing again. We are witnessing an ugly war that is going on right across the borders of our country. The war that is going on in Ukraine. It's a war that we just heard about in the history books. It's a war that we thought it's not possible anymore in the 21st century. And still there is so much pain. There is so much suffering happening again. And so many people had to flee their country, flee their homes and find safety in Western countries, in uh, Western Europe. And so many of them had to start a brand new life. And in, in circumstances like this, we wonder why is all this happening? Why are things going so bad sometimes? And we don't know the answer to this question, but we know something that in times like this and in circumstances like this, God is growing our faith. Friends, I want to remind you of a great story in the New Testament, uh, the story of Peter walking on water. Maybe you remember how the disciples were in the midst of the night. They were fighting the storm and Jesus was walking on water towards them. And at some point, Peter had a special request for Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And it's a special prayer. It's a special, it's a weird prayer, we could say. Because if I was Peter, I would have said, Lord, if it's you, please calm down the storm. But Peter is not asking for an improvement of conditions and circumstances. He is asking for a command. So many times when life is difficult, so many times when we go through pain and suffering, it's so easy to pray and say, Lord, if it's you, if it's you, please give me a job. If it's you, please uh, heal my broken marriage. If it's you, please cure my cancer. If it's you, please take care of my insecurities. Lord, if it's you, uh, please uh, uh, help me to fight to fight all the loneliness that I feel so many times. But Peter is not praying that. He is asking Jesus to give him a command and he, he just wants to get closer to Jesus in the midst of the pain. And I am so impressed with his faith because Jesus replies to Peter with just one word. And Jesus tells Peter, come. And one word for Peter is enough to step out in faith and walk on water towards Jesus. Just one word come was enough for Peter. So many times, maybe God is telling you just one word. And one word should be enough for you to change your life. One word should be enough for you to uh, draw closer to God and to draw closer to Jesus. One word should be enough for you tonight to start a new relationship with Jesus. I remember many years ago when Romania was under communism, there was this great pastor, uh, probably you've heard about him already. His name was Richard Wurbrand, and he was he was in prison for 14 years. And so many times the Communist Party asked him to deny God, but he refused. So they kept him in prison for 14 years. And two of these 14 years he spent in solitary confinement. Can you imagine alone in darkness for two years? So while he was there in solitary confinement, he, he thought that he should find something to occupy his time with. So many times he, he tells how he would close down his eyes and he would uh, think of a scripture and then he would imagine that he is preaching to his congregation. And many times in solitary confinement, day after day, he would do the same thing, close his eyes and start preaching to his congregation. But one day, the, 
the Spirit of God whispered something different to Richard Verbrand. Instead of preaching, God told him to sing a song, and that was weird for him. He thought, how should I start singing by myself here in solitary confinement? However, he obeyed the Spirit of God, and he starts singing a song right there in solitary confinement. And he starts singing, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And he sang the whole song. What he didn't know was that in the other cell, he had a neighbor, and he was a non-Christian, and he was in solitary confinement as well. But he had enough of the prison. He had enough of the torture. torture. He had enough of the solitary confinement. So he decided to commit suicide. But before he committed suicide, he heard that someone is singing right there in the darkness, in the midst of the hell. Someone is singing. So he thought, who in the world can sing in a place like this? So he postponed, he postponed his thoughts of committing suicide. And he wanted to find out where is this song coming from? A few months later, Richard Verbrand and other people prisoners, including his neighbor, were moved in another part of the prison. And now they were allowed to get out in the courtyard of the communist prison 30 minutes a day. And one day while they were in the courtyard, the Spirit of God spoke to Richard Verbrand again and told him, sing again the song that you sang a few months ago. And he thought, how should I start singing here in the courtyard? If I start singing, they would put me in solitary confinement again. If I don't sing, I'm not going to obey the Holy Spirit. So what should I do? So he thought of something and he started whistling the song, the tune of the song. So while he was uh, whistling the tune of, of Blessed Assurance, uh, the other non-Christian prisoner was there in the courtyard and heard him. So he went to him and he asked him, did you sing this song a few months ago? And Richard Wurbrand looked at him and he said, yes, I sang this song. And he said, he looked at him and he said, I want you to know that you saved my life because I wanted to commit suicide. But when I heard that someone is singing in the midst of the hell, I thought that there should be hope for me as well. So please tell me about Jesus. Tell me about the faith that you have. So right there, Richard Wurbrand started witnessing in the, in the communist courtyard of that prison. He started witnessing to this non-Christian and tell him about Jesus. One word for him was enough. Friends, maybe today God is speaking one word to you. I don't know what that word is, but maybe today God is calling you as he called Peter and he's telling you, come, come and start a new relationship with me. Come and I want to grow your, your faith. Step out in faith and see what I can do for you. Step out in faith and see what I can do for this church. And God is calling you maybe today to start a new ministry, to start something great for you for your life for your church i want you to obey god i want you to learn today from peter how to draw closer to to jesus even though the circumstances might be bad for you and friends look what is happening then peter got down of the boat walked on the water and came toward jesus but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sing he cried out lord save me and immediately, Jesus, I love this world, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And friends, I know that at some point Peter failed, but please notice what Jesus is doing. Please notice that Jesus is reaching out to him. And please notice something else. There in the boat were other disciples and they didn't walk on water at all. I mean at all. And that is why I believe that a little bit on water is better than always in the boat. A little bit on water is better than always in the boat. And when Jesus is reaching out to Peter, he doesn't hold him under the water and, and say to him, you embarrass me, Peter. He doesn't hold him under the water and, and tells him, you never do this crazy thing again. He doesn't hold him under the water and tells the other disciples, look, this is not a good example for you to follow. But the Bible says that immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. And Jesus tells him, you of little faith. 
And maybe so many times we take this as a rebuke. But I want to tell you something else today. You of little faith is better than you of no faith at all. Because in other place, Jesus said that if you have little faith, you can move the mountains. Little faith sometimes is, is, is enough to follow Jesus. And when you have little faith, Jesus, as you follow him, he helps you grow your faith. You just have to step out on water and follow Jesus and friends. Let me tell you that Sarang Church, so many times, you were, and you are such a great example for us. Because so many times you stepped out on water and you build a great ministry in Seoul. You build a great church in South Korea. You stepped out on water and you sent missionaries all over the world. You stepped out on water and you are doing these uh, dawn prayer revivals. You stepped down on, on water so many times and you have done great and amazing things for God. And here in Oradia, we as a church, 13 years ago, we stepped out in faith and we started this church in this ministry. We stepped out in faith a few years ago and we rented the biggest place in this city and we did a big outreach so, so that more uh, people in this city will find Jesus. A few years ago, we stepped out in faith and we start building building this beautiful place where we meet right now. And we started this construction because we want that here in this place, many people to find Jesus as their savior. And God is calling us again now to step out in faith and follow him and obey him. And now, while this war is happening, we stepped out in faith and we know that this is an opportunity for us as a church to shine again for Jesus. So we stepped out in faith and now is the time for us to help the uh, Ukrainian refugees. And in the last three weeks, we were sending buses, many, many buses to the Ukrainian border, 500 kilometers away from here and we were bringing Ukrainians here at Hope Church and we were feeding them and providing housing for them and assistance to them. We were able to help over 3,000 refugees in the last three weeks and we helped them start a new life in Western countries in Europe. And I remember that a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, there was this family that came to Hope Church and they were so discouraged and they were going through so much pain and suffering. The whole family was here, but one of their children was in a wheelchair and they didn't have a place to go. They didn't know where to start a new life. So some friends of ours from Austria they said, send them to us and we will try to help them. So we sent this family to them and they, they arrived there, but they were still so discouraged. They were going through so much pain. And our friends in Austria, they, were, they are living in a small town. So they were trying to help them. So they called the mayor of that city and asked if the city could provide some help for this family. And the mayor him, himself came to church to meet them. And when he saw them, he offered them a place to stay as a family. He offered them the possibility to start a new beginning and a new life. And he offered the father of the family a job. And this family was provided with a new beginning. And friends, during this time, we as a church, because we step out in faith, we were able not just to help Ukrainians, but we were able to witness to Ukrainians and to be Jesus for them, to be Jesus' hands and Jesus' feet for these people because God is calling us to step out in faith and go to him even when he just whispers and when he speaks just one word, come, we need to obey Jesus because when we obey him, that's when God is growing our faith. 
And I believe the best is yet to come. I believe the best is yet to come for Sarang Church. I believe that together we can, we can uh, do great things for God. And friends, I'm still praying that God will bring revival here in Romania. And now I'm praying that a revival will start in Ukraine. And I'm praying that this revival will spread across Eastern Europe, will spread all over the world, will spread spread in South Korea. We are still praying for North Korea that God will use times like this to bring freedom. And so many people, we believe that they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because look what is happening. At some point, Jesus, Peter is asking Jesus and he's saying, if it's you, and Peter is reaching out to him. And he's taking, him, he's taking Peter back to his boat. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This story is not just about Peter walking on water. This story is about Jesus increasing Peter's faith and the disciples' faith. This story is about God increasing my faith and your faith. And I pray that together we will be able to draw close to Jesus and do great things for Jesus and for God in the years that will come.